upgrade on the Mini's cooling system. We're going to be installing an all aluminum radiator. So end caps, everything, center section, it's all aluminum. So we don't have to worry about any plastic end tanks that are going to crack and fail on us. Everything being aluminum is going to have a little bit more heat release than if you have the plastic end tanks. And then of course, it's going to be a little bit thicker, which is going to provide a little bit more cooling capacity. On top of that, the Mini has an oil cooler that is a liquid to liquid cooler where the oil goes through one passage and the coolant goes through another passage that are right next to each other and they're going to exchange heat so by upgrading the radiator on here not only we're cooling the coolant more but that's going to help cool the oil more so it's a win-win on the mini here this is an ebay radiator it cost me a hundred bucks and the reason for that is it's really really hard to mess up a radiator nowadays with all the machines doing the welding the welds are consistent all the way around we're going to pressure check it in just a second to make sure that there's no leaks and even if there were, you could get one of your buddies who can weld or if you can weld yourself to quickly tack that up and fill in any holes. And for the mini, fitment issues aren't going to be that big of a deal and it's also really not that hard to get a radiator right. You're going to go in two rubber bushings with these little posts on top and then two bolts down here at the bottom. So it's something that's easily modifiable. You've got a little bit of wiggle room on how you install it. I am not even remotely concerned about this eBay radiator working out for us. I've been running a Megan Racing radiator, which is really only one step above an eBay radiator in my 350Z for years, and that car is going to have a lot harder life than the Mini will. So we'll pressure check it, and then we will throw it in the car. One thing I would definitely recommend doing before you install any radiator, whether it's an OEM radiator, eBay radiator, nice name brand, if they provide an easy way to do it, it just takes a couple of extra seconds. It's not that big of a deal. What you're going to do is you're going to pressure test it using some sort of air compressor, and you're just going to cap off any exits to the radiator. They have made it super easy for me because the Mini does not have a radiator cap or anything like that. It has that on a different expansion tank. They came with these two caps, so I just put two hose clamps on either side. I made sure to clamp them down nice and tight because I've got the little stem that you would use to fill up something like a basketball or a volleyball, and it's attached to my Ryobi air compressor, so I'm just going to fill it up real quick. Check it real quick for leaks. You'll hear a really high-pitched hiss. Anywhere there's a leak, it's going to be really obvious. If you feel a little bit of air coming out here, it's just because you didn't seal it well enough. So the gauge right now is holding steady at 15 PSI. I don't want to take it up too high. The highest you'll probably see on some aftermarket caps are about 19 PSI, so you don't want to take it up too far past that. But we're holding consistently. We're not dropping down. I don't hear any noises. So we are good to go on our eBay radiator, and we can go ahead and install it in the car. So as you can probably tell, our radiator is right here. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove the front end of the car and put it in what's called front end service mode. So you're going to be removing the bumper cover, the bumper, and you're going to get a little bit of access to the areas around here, moving things like the condenser out of the way. You will have to remove both front wheels and jack the car up. It makes it easier to get under the front bumper. It also allows you to remove the attachments on the fender liner, so that way you can pull everything out of the way. So we're going to go through, work our way through that. There's screws underneath the front edge of the bumper. There's one right here on each corner. Of course, the attachments to the fender liner. And then you've got one right here and the same on the other side. We're going to work our way through that, get the front fascia off, and then we'll start working on the bumper itself. With the bumper cover out of the way, now we're going to remove the bumper, which we're going to remove some 13 millimeter nuts and bolts along either side. So far, this has been the easiest bumper I've ever had to remove. It's way easier than the 350Z, and it's a little bit easier than the E39 as well. Next, we're going to be taking out the two crash beams. There's one right here, and same on the other side. They're held on by two 16-millimeter bolts. They're tucked underneath the car, so you're just going to have to get under there, undo those, and then these slide forward. You can hit them lightly with a hammer from the back, and once those are out of the way, this plastic trim piece that goes around the radiator can come out. The condenser is held on by two 10-millimeter bolts, one here and one here. So we'll slide that out of the way, not disconnecting it because we don't want to have to recharge the system. We'll just kind of slide it off to the side, shouldn't be an issue, and then we'll have access to the radiator. So you're going to have a wiring harness on this side and on the other side that covers the horn and all the different lights that are over here. You're going to want to thread that through so that it's removed on both sides. There's a plug over here for the fans. You also have a clamp up here for the intake, the little funnel here off of the hood. And then, like I said, you've got the two 10 millimeter bolts holding on the condenser. That kind of lifts up off a little slot on this side and on the other side. 
So now that everything is out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and drain the coolant out of the radiator, and then we can work on getting it out of the engine bay and then back in with the new one. Unfortunately, there's no drain plug in the Mini. You're just going to have to use the lower radiator hose. And then once you've got that draining and over your drain pan, you can open up your reservoir over here to allow it to drain a little bit easier. So we've got all the coolant drained. We have removed this plug right here, and we removed the cap on our expansion tank, both to help extra fluid come out. So we've got everything drained out, but we can. I'm going to take off the top hose now. You could also do that instead of removing this plug. That's just a little bit easier and cleaner. As you can see, we have our condenser hanging out of the way. So we should be able to start sliding the radiator out. It uses a very interesting clip that is here and here on the top corners. And what it is, is it's this little collar here that slides all the way through. And similar to the bumper clips, you have a piece that slides in here, and as it goes to the other side, it causes these barbs to expand. So you're going to pry that out with a screwdriver. You have a little spot where you can get fit a screwdriver in to start prying it out. And all you have to do is pry that out, and then the radiator is free on the top. It's two barbs holding it in on the bottom, so you should be able to lift it out as soon as the hoses are disconnected. So it should be pretty easy. We'll see how this goes. So the fans are connected directly to the radiator, and a wire runs along the back of the fans and radiator here and connects over on the other side. I did disconnect that, but it's zip-tied on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect that so I can pull it out as a unit and put the fans on the new radiator before we install it back in. So actually, because the fans are just held on little hooks on the back, it was easy just to slide it up about half an inch and leave it in place instead of having to disconnect everything to take it off with the radiator. With the bottom radiator hose attachment point being at a curved up hose end, it will retain a good amount of fluid in the bottom about inch of the radiator. So take it off carefully and then you can pour the rest in your pan and then take it off to be recycled. You can see the cores over here on the right the factory core is 25 mil thick, and the one over here is 40 mil thick. If you're doing SAE measurements, the factory one is one inch thick, and the aftermarket unit is about one and five eighths of an inch thick. So big improvement there on top of the fact that it is all aluminum. So of course, install is just reverse of everything being taken out. So you're gonna start to slip it in down at the bottom. You've got two little barbs down here that slide into rubber bushings. So make sure you take those off the factory part, kind of get that in place. You can slot the fans on, of course, you can take the fans out and do it opposite of the way I did and install it all as one unit, whatever you think is easier. I don't foresee any reason to have fitment issues, 5 eighths of an inch. It looks like we had plenty of room for that throughout the process. Hopefully some of that is on either side. So instead of it being 5 eighths of an inch, we're only adding a little over a quarter inch on either side. But for me, it is not time to install the new radiator. I'm actually doing a supercharger replacement. So that video is coming in the future. So we're going to be replacing the supercharger on here with a rebuilt one from Detroit Tuned. So look forward to that. Now, of course, for this video, I will film me wrapping it up. So in the next couple of seconds, you're going to see me put this one back in, but just giving you a sneak peek on what's coming in the future. It is the next day. I've got the fan installed on the radiator. Everything fit super well. I had to slightly modify these bottom tabs just to fit them a little bit tighter. So I'd rather it be a little loose and I can make it tighter than the other way around. But other than that, it fan just pops on. You're going to have the rubber isolator on the top and bottom post on either side. So you have to transfer those other from the old radiator. So make sure you don't throw those away. And then, of course, you've got the cord from the fan. So that is going to run underneath the hose that's going to end up on the top passenger side of the vehicle if you're in the States. But if you're in England, it's going to be on the driver's side of the vehicle and then snake its way back over to the other side. So just make sure you feed that through before you start installing the radiator. So the two bottom posts are going to slot into two little circle holes in the front support there. And then you're just going to lean it up and into the engine bay. The exact reverse of how you uninstalled the other one. You'll push those clips in and the radiator install will be done. And then you'll just put everything back where it came from and you'll be able to enjoy your new radiators. Well, our radiator is in, and I see no fitment issues. Um, it's obviously a little bit bigger, but it seems to fit just fine. So we will go through the rest of the process, and I'll let you know if I run into anything. But as of right now, I am very happy with it. It slid right in. So we'll get everything bled and filled up, and I'll let you guys know how it went. 
Well, guys, I'm doing the wrap-up on this video a little bit later than I normally do. I have had this in for about three or four months now, and I have done two track days on it, and this thing has been great. It has been a champ. The track day I did on Rolling Road, it was literally over 100 degrees at the beginning of each session during the middle of the day, and this thing ran perfect. It kept our coolant temperatures in a good range. It kept our oil temperatures in a good range. It did an amazing job. I had no issues getting it in. I've had no issues with it leaking. And it is held up to two completely separate track days and thousands of miles of driving. So it has done extremely well. I am very happy with this purchase and I would definitely recommend picking up an aluminum radiator for your Mini. Really with automated welding, it's really hard to mess up an aluminum product now. So I definitely trust this radiator. Of course, if you guys have any questions about it, any comments, feel free to drop those below. But hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week.